Hey, hey, hey. It's another Sunday. Yep, it's another Sunday. Here we are. Time to pull our energy in together and focus for the week ahead. Let's talk about how's it going? How's your week been? It has been super challenging for a lot of people. What has it been for you? Come on in and join me, Terri Ann Hyman here from Natural Forces Studio and the Empowered Spirit Circle on Facebook. Come on in and join me. Let me know what's going on. Let me know how you're doing through this challenging time. It really is. It really is some intense energy going around. We're really definitely in the midst of that retrograde, but also we're also in the midst of some really intense cosmic energy. The moon energy is really intense. We've got the spiritual energy of the moons coming forward. We've got WESOC coming up next month. Really intense spiritual energy where that consciousness is shifting and raising. And if you're not in there knowing your energy, you could feel a little bit off. You really could. Lots of challenges going on. I think Laurie posted in about the conjunction of Mars and the moon. So a lot of that challenging energy coming up for a lot of us right now. And we're going to see a little bit more. I hate to tell you that. We've got another week of it coming through. So come on in. Let's talk about what's going on. See what you're talking about within your own chatter, right? What is coming up for everybody right now? I was super happy to see everybody posting in the Empowered Spirit Circle. If you didn't make the challenge, come on in and see the pictures, sacred spaces, people posting about that. So hopefully that used those five days, you're able to use those five days as a way to reestablish or maybe just start your own spiritual practice and continue to build. I'll be perfectly honest with you guys. I have had to increase my amount of meditation three times a day. Yep, working with my teachers, meditating, working in the Akashic Records, moving it out, listening to Kriyas at night, to music, to really make some of that shift happen for me. Also did a lot of cleaning, 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 move out, move out the old papers, the old energy. Felt really good just to clear it out. Opening up, making way for new people to come in, new work to come forward. We have to do that now. The universe is really asking us. It is stirring it up. Maybe you hadn't felt it. If you hadn't felt it, let me know. Give me a thumbs up if you haven't felt what's going on beneath the surface and all around us. I know for me, I've had to do a lot of processing. I've had to go in, let all of this out. Just like I'm throwing out papers and stuff and cleaning out my space. The same with our own chatter. Very important to know our energy right now. Very important to know how are we taking it on? How are we putting it out there? Who are we conversing with, right? Really important right now to understand these interactions. All too easy to take it on. All too easy to take on other people's stuff, not know what's going on, and get lost. And the other part too, it's all too easy to keep stuffing down stuff that you've taken on, especially like emotional energy, emotional abuse. Maybe you've taken on some of that verbal abuse from a partner, from somebody at work, and you're just stuffing it and you're starting to feel the effects. I know that feeling, right? We have to really work with the energy. We have to really know it. Right now, reeling very a lot. Let's see, feeling so much, Patrick says. Yay, good to see you. Hey, Terry, hey, Terry too. How about you? What have you been noticing? All right, really important. I'm really hoping the spiritual challenge helped people to open up, to start to build that practice, because then what? Then what do we do once we have that spiritual practice? Then we become aware of our energy. Then we become aware of how we're putting our energy out, what we're taking on, how we're interacting with people. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Very important that we know this. And like I said, we have a whole nother week of kind of going through a lot of these challenges. The word for the middle of the week is just going to be surrender. We have a new moon coming in on Sunday. And by next time, next week at this time, and moving any more in, things are going to start to go direct. And we're going to see a swift change again. Like that roller coaster, like the weather patterns, right? We're already seeing that already going on. So we too, spiritually and physically, are going to see that happening as well. So yes, it has been challenging. I have to admit, like I said, really coming into my practice is really important. Really finding those moments to connect, right? Really finding those spiritual experiences. Finding those moments when everything does get quiet, when we can hear that guidance for ourselves, really important. This week coming up on the Empowered Spirit Show, I have um, another person, Lily Sanders, who's sharing a spiritual experience for her, right? Kind of something we've been talking about, those moments when you just get it, when you realize something has to shift. So she's talking about it. She wrote a book. She's helping other people. She lives in New York City, does her healing up there. She has a book out, Tears to Tr Truth, to Tr Truth to Triumph is her book. And she shares her spiritual experience in that moment that everything just kind of, opened up for her. So really important 
that we know our energy, that we know when we can be in alignment with the physical, the spiritual, mental, and emotional. Really important that we know that so we can have these spiritual experiences, so we can go forward and make choices in our life that really suit us. You know what? I had this moment in yoga this morning in Mysore where I thought, Maybe I have something else I need to be doing right now. Maybe there is something surfacing for me. We have to be open to those moments, right? Everything is changing around us. Everything is changing around us. Today I was at a funeral and we lost a really important person in the community here in Birmingham that helped establish it. And as I'm looking around, I'm seeing the generations are shifting. Energy is shifting, right? So we have to shift as well. We have to know where we fit into our community, where we can be of service, where we can help. We can break the barriers. Birmingham has come a long way, guys, a long way in the many years that I've been here and have returned and seeing it. This is a person in our community that really helped the Jewish community, helped the black population, helped the civil rights, and I saw it all around me today. So really important that we know where we are and the work that we do and the way that we put our energy out there, really important, and the way we pull it back in, super important. So yes, where is it for you? So as we come around to this energy, one of the things we're going to be noticing this week, <laughs> Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday, kind of the beginning of the week, is we're still going to be feeling those struggles. All right? We're going to be having some of that opposition, a little power play and communication, right? Wednesday is the time that we just need to kind of just surrender. We just need to surrender, chill. This is when I say double up on your meditation. Find those moments, all right, in the middle of the day, before you go to bed, in the morning, just to be quiet and be still. Right, and that's going to help you move through it. By the time we get to the end of the weekend and that new moon, we still have dark of the moon. Dark of the moon can always be a little intense too because we're going to see more of that reflection of some of our deeper parts of what's going on. That's why we do the work. That's why we process. And then by the time we get to the new moon and next week, we're going to start to feel it. But we're also going to feel it kind of take off again. So where are you with that for yourself? Have a plan. But be, be trying, if you can, chill this week. I know it may be a challenging time, but really important that you bring your spiritual practices with you where you go. At night, we talked about it last week, right? I think Friday night was the bath, right? Make sure you get those moments to really chill and really detox out of you. Spring is all about that. Spring season is actually about cleaning the liver, cleaning the gallbladder. What is that? anger, emotions, resentment, all that stuff. So maybe you're feeling a little bit, that's in alignment actually, in alignment with the season. So we need to do things that we can to clear this energy out, which reminds me that I will be having a um, spring cleanse in my yoga series that I'm doing at Birmingham Yoga on Wednesday nights. We're gonna be focusing on really getting into some of that cleansing. I'm gonna be offering some Ayurvedic tips and offering ways that we can help this along. Yes, I'm definitely, Definitely going to be, I'm going to share this. I forgot all about sharing into the group, the Empowered Spirit Circle. If you're not in the group, come over. Guys are welcome. It's not just women. Come on over. Let me share this before I forget. But if you're interested in really kind of, you know, really working on your own energy system and feeling better, maybe you've suffered a little bit of a cold, maybe some of that sinus stuff, all of that, lymphatics, congestion, all of that is what's going on right now, and we need to work with it. We need to do some detoxing and cleansing right now so that you can process the new energy. You can move forward. Perfect time right now, especially this week as we move out of that last retrograde. I know there's always a little bit extra going on. There we go. I shared it going on. If you could share it too, that would be so helpful. The more people can catch this and find things to do. Love that about detox and lots of energy everywhere. Super good and productive, but kind of little all over the place. Losing things. Needed to slow down today. Very good point, Brooke. I think it's really important that we do slow down. I know that feeling, and I know for me, this last week, three times a day, I've been coming into meditations, working with my Akashic Record teachers, working with my Pranic Healing teacher, making myself slow down, making myself be quiet, and really getting to the vibration of flow, just like, I'm okay. I have everything I need just for today. Getting into that moment and really working on letting the rest of it just burn away. Let my higher guides, we talked about connecting with our higher guides, let them come in and lift that energy up, lift the struggle up. That's what we need to do right now. Hey, Thelma, love all those pictures you've been posting, all those sacred spaces. It really, I have to say thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. It made me feel so good to see all those sacred spaces going on. Really important. 
really important that we connect and I'm going through some stuff too right now and having a community to connect with super grateful hashtag gratitude then doing a gratitude journal really important too. journaling gratitude things every morning just to get that lower vibration out so those are some of the things that you could do do the cleanse come join me in the restorative yoga Wednesday nights at 6 30 it's on Birmingham yoga's website all right it's a four-week series let's twist let's turn let's do talk about cleansing the liver coming back into alignment with some Ayurvedic oils and tips excited to share that also too if you want to know more about your empathic energy hey miss Lori Z girl I was talking about you if you want to know more about your empathic energy all right webinar Monday night now that you've got your spiritual practice now let's look at your own personal energy what is it what are your sensitivities how can we turn those into your superpowers that's what I'll be talking about going through six different types of empaths also going to be talking about combinations of people that you run into like how does a narcissistic person and an empath I know that one how does that energy affect you right that's an intense combination what are some of the other combinations right that we're going to talk about and work with on that I'll be going over six not five six topics six types of empaths and how they can affect you I mean they're good and some are intense so you have to know which you are and what your intuitive gift is because as you understand your your um, empath abilities and that will feed right in so definitely it's on Facebook tomorrow night 7 p.m. it'll be more of a webinar style lots of information to share because I am opening up my empowered spirit group program yes so if you've been wanting to work with me and you've been wanting to learn more about your empathic nature about your intuition definitely the empowered spirit group is for you more information on my website but come to the webinar come see what your empath is about what are those sensitivities and we'll talk more about the program then one step at a time right we build it up little by little getting to know our own energy definitely all right so just to recap for those that are just kind of joining in before we do our meditation and move into the cards cards are in alignment love it love it love it we're gonna have a little bit more of this week being a little bit crazy being a little bit in that struggle and really being forced to look at some stuff about ourselves and feeling scattered I think like Brooke said all over the place so we're really gonna have to pull the energy together all right by the middle of the week you're gonna want to start sliding through a little bit surrender is the way to do it find extra times to meditate just to sit in your sacred space just to put your feet up the wall these are things that can really really help you to do that all right clear your energy burn your sage take those detox baths call in your higher guides all those things we talked about in the spiritual challenge that was so much fun also on the webinar I'm gonna be announcing the winners we have some great winners I'm tallying it up now I'll be announcing those on the um, empath webinar tomorrow night so be sure to tune in all right guys that new moon is coming we're gonna be all glad to get out of this retrograde and new moon energy moving forward and again it's gonna be like a swift change so be prepared right and by that it's like clearing the declutter clearing out all that excess energy really finishing up from that retro energy I know yesterday I cleaned and threw out and went through half my workspace I still have more to do but it felt so good to empty those files so good to open up for new things to come in for new people to work with for new abilities to come forward so I offer you the same all right so let's take a moment <sighs> take a deep inhale yes Millie so important if you want to shift your energy and you don't know how start cleaning really start cleaning eight bags of trash see Laurie says the same thing and Laurie's been talking about it too me too me too just moving it out it feels so good more to do all right let's take a nice deep inhale let's center our energy for the week if you have some sage around go ahead and light it or some Palo Santo whatever your favorite choice is just take this moment to clean your energy, prepare for the week, get rid of the anxiety. I know a lot of us have anxiety on Sunday night. Take a nice deep inhale. <sighs> and exhale away. Love my altar, my flowers of maybe a couple of more days. Cleanse the space, cleanse your energy, cleanse the etheric, reaching out to all of you. Inhaling and exhaling. And just send that breath all the way down deep into the floor feel your feet flat on the floor if you're sitting in a chair if you can opening up those foot chakras send them down inhaling bring in that breath all the way up the spine up into the heavens and exhale send it all the way back down deep into the earth 
Just feel that spiritual body coming right into alignment with the physical body. As you open up, inhaling, call in your higher guides, align, feel them right above you coming in. That helps to pull that spiritual body, exhaling through that first chakra, sending it deep into the earth. Inhaling up through the root chakra, up through the heavens. And exhale, send it back down. Just honoring gratitude for your life right now. For wherever you are, all is in perfection just for today. Inhaling as we honor the directions, honoring the spring, beautiful spring, the direction of the east. We honor new beginnings, new seeds, the sun, the sunrise. And as we exhale, we honor the south, the west, and the north. Above us, below us, right into the very center. Feel that deep breath as you open your heart to the week ahead of you. Inhaling and exhaling. And just for a moment, as you get really quiet, feel where your energy is. Listen all around you, hear whatever it is in your immediate space, and then horizontally opening up. See if you can extend your energy, your awareness a little bit more, open up your energy field around you. Maybe it's to the next room in your house. Continue the breath, and then extend it out a little bit more. Maybe it's around your neighborhood. See if you can feel your energy body. See if you can sense what's going on outside your house. Hear the sounds. Maybe it's a TV in another room. Maybe it's kids playing outside. And then expand it all the way as far as you can. Maybe it's out into the city. Inhaling. And as you exhale, start to bring it back in. Back into your neighborhood. Bring your energy back. Bring that energy field back into your house. And then bring it right around you, pulling it in. Noticing now that center of alignment for you. Good. And just take a moment. Imagine a crystal ball right above your head. Right above your head. And see your name in it. See your name written in that crystal ball. And then allow that energy to come down and fill in your aura calling back all the many parts of you've scattered all week, feeling really centered, feeling it coming right into the power of that third chakra. To open up to that energy, to know your power, to know your own energy. You can, you can, you can. Inhaling. Feeling that focus coming in. Exhaling down. Inhaling. And exhaling. And just bringing that awareness back. Feel your feet on the floor. Notice how that third eye is opened now. Feel that energy there. Notice how you've been able to drop into the heart. Notice the third chakra even opening. Feel that alignment with the hips on the floor, the second and the first. Feel that nice alignment. Reminding you of your power, your energy. Know your energy. Inhaling, coming back, and exhaling. Taking a deep inhale, opening the eyes. I have a little souvenir from my flowers. How beautiful, right? Honor the flowers that are blooming now. All right, coming back. Here we go with the cards, drawing from the wild unknown. And actually, I picked, I picked an animal card this morning from the Animal Spirit deck. Also, Kim Kranz. They kind of go with this deck, too. So I haven't done that. I'm excited to share that. Kind of interesting energy. Perfect, really. As usual, the cards have so much great information. All right. So our universal card is the Ten of Wands. All right. But it is upside down. All right. Here's the card upside down. Here it is. Here it is normal. And here it is upside down. It came up upside down. Now, when reverse cards come up, there's many ways to interpret it. First, we look at the meaning of the card, and then we look at how it is. I like to look, especially in this deck, is what is still underneath the surface. So this is about finishing up with that struggle, but it's reversed. So that means that, yes, there's a little bit more to come up, but it's going to be time to put this to rest. So it reminds me of, like, for me, like, all that cleaning I was doing, all that pulling out the papers, all that getting rid of, whatever that old energy is for you, it needs to come up and surface, all right? Now, this is 
wand. So wands is our passions, our desires, could be even a little bit more of that deeper part of who we are. All right, but know that you still need to move through this a little bit. This is universal for everybody, but there is an ending coming to this kind of energy. So help it along, help it along, detox, clean, all the things we've been talking about are ways to move that out. Now, if you look to the cards that we drew for how to do this even greater, that's what we're going to start. So if you picked one, one, I love this card, one of my favorites, Nine of Cups. This is a wish card. So this is kind of like, all right, when you do that work and you know what your intentions are, it's like kind of like being prepared for next week when all this moves out. What is it you'll be prepared for? What is it you can wish for and open up to? This is a nice alignment of card. All right, so if you drew this, know that you need to maybe have some of this underneath, okay? Very important. And this will help you also to be inspired to let that other stuff go, all right? It's kind of like how I was working on my desk and cleaning out all the old folders. Now I have a whole stack of empty folders. So hey, if you wanna come work with me, I have a spot for you. That's what it feels like. Clear it out, make room for that energy to come forward. So what is it that you are? What is it you're wishing for? Where can your heart open for this energy as you rid yourself of some of that chaotic stuff, all right? So that was number one. Now, if you drew number two, this is a reverse card too. This is the three of wands, all right? So this kind of reminds us that, yay, there is cooperation. There is stuff building. There is work going on. Look at the beautiful rainbow in the center. There is focus. There is things working, but it's reversed. So I like to look at this card as like kind of, whoops, kind of offering, offer gratitude. Turn this card around. Offer gratitude for all those that are helping you do the work you do. You're not doing this alone. Think of your community, think of the people. Maybe there's two other people. Maybe you're in a partnership. Maybe it's in your own family. But there are people that are helping you. This is a really great card for me right now to remember as well. We don't have to be isolated, all right? So turn this around for you. This is how it is reversed. This is how it drew. We want to turn it around. We want to honor this kind of work. And that's also going to help you get rid of this. This can feel isolated and done. This can feel like, okay, I got support that I need. So that's the card that's going to help you move the other out. Offer gratitude for that. Now, if you drew number three, we have the lover's card, but it's reversed too. So there is some energy underneath the surface that maybe you aren't honoring enough about love, about partnership, about communication with somebody else, relationship energy, all right? This particular card normally in the lovers makes you have a choice like where is that devotion for yourself in relationship to someone else as well. She talks about it a lot in this card as you know the swans they mate for life. Where is that partnership coming in for you? But again it was reversed. So we need to look at what those partners are. What that partnership is. And what better time than in a retrograde right? We don't have to take it to heart. We just have to work through it and surrender. But I think the card for here right now is where can you offer that self-love for yourself right now that's going to help you in that partnership. Really important. We actually talk about that on the Empowered Spirit Show this week with Lily Sanders. We talk about loving ourselves. We talk about love being such a great vibration and how much that can help you. Right? We do. We talk about that. So that's definitely very in alignment with what is going on right now. All right. So let's just sum it up. For all of us, there is some more struggle coming this week, perfect alignment with what we were saying, but as you do your work, as you clean it up, it will be done. Cut it off, be finished, yes, and be proactive with that. Don't just hope it goes away. Clean up. If you don't know what to do, just start cleaning. That's the best. But otherwise, detox. Do your do your energy work. Do your meditations. Do your baths. Get out and walk. Like Get rid of that excess energy that you're like doing here. Put it into the physical. Rid yourself of it, all right? Look deep. Remember, wands are our passions and desires. Look deep, all right? That's part of that. So Uranus energy, Laurie. Jupiter energy. Sorry, Jupiter energy. That's part of that Jupiter retrograde going on that we need to look deep and move it forward. All right, so the things that come in to help us is have a plan. Make a wish. Know where your intentions are. Like for wishing for this kind of reminds me of like setting intentions to move forward out of this energy. And we can do that as we declutter and get rid of the rest. The second card up was about offering gratitude for those that have been supportive in your work. Like really being grateful. Do a gratitude journey. Let me tell you, I've been doing that for me for the last two months. Love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. It started off, let me think of 10. Now it's pages. All right, really great thing to do. So turn that energy around. Know your skills are building. You're creating something really great. Honor the community and the people that are around you. And then dig a little deeper on the self-love so that you can turn this card over and find that mate. Find that partner with others with maybe one in particular coming forward for you. 
all right? It's underneath the surface, so turn it around. And the best way to turn it around, love yourself. Really love yourself. Do things that are good for you. Do these cleanses. Do these things that help you to show up more empowered in the world. Have that richness in your life. Have that confidence. Know your energy. Know your energy. That is so big right now. Whether or not you realize it or not, whether you're throwing energy on others or you're being thrown at, really need to know your energy. Really important. All right. Take a deep inhale. If you have any questions about the cards, just post below. Let me post below. Let me know. The other card that I did draw, all right, I thought was very interesting from the Animal Spirit deck. For a little guidance, is the bat. Love it. The bat reminds me kind of the hanged man in the traditional deck, but the bat. The bat uses a different kind of energy, right? It uses that sonar, that nighttime. And this is also a little bit in alignment with this card here because this has also got some of that death energy to it, right? That destruction, let it go, all right? The, ba the bat, he sleeps at night. I mean, he's working at night and he knows that morning sunrise is gonna come. So one of the things when you feel out of balance about this card is really understand that. I was actually going to read from the book. I don't very often do this, but I haven't really, I don't know this deck very well, but I thought it was really interesting because it does symbolize the darkness. It does symbolizing letting go, death leading to rebirth. Perfect timing, right? Before emerging, the bat waits for the sun to set and the moon to rise in the darkness. It can see all that was invisible, invisible in the daylight. The bat is a master of the subtle senses, all right? That's like knowing your energy of the underlying forces that cause some things to prosper and others to fade. So what is it causing for you right now? What are you prospering in and what are you fading in? The bat card shows up to signify the ending of a chapter, all right? What we just said, the closing of a door. The bat comes swiftly, encouraging us to move on. That's what we're going to feel like after this week. We have to get through it. In just a few hours, a new day dawns. No more lingering in the past. So a beautiful choice for cards. I thought it was kind of fun to draw a little extra card. Give us a little different intake on the energy. All right, I see a couple of requests coming up. I don't know what I do with the cards. Where are the cards? Only see the animal cards. I left them in the other room. All right, we're drawing animal cards. I don't have the wild unknown with me. All right, so let's see what we get, all right? This will be interesting. All right, Thelma, then Andrea says, Phil would like a card. Have a door closing, having a door closed. Yes, that's what that energy is about. All right, let's see what the animal cards bring up. I must have left the wild unknown in the other room. All right, no accident. All right, here we go. If we need to use the book, we'll use the book. Otter. I remember drawing this one year. Otter is last year, as a matter of fact. Otter is all about playful energy. Thelma, this is for you, all right? All about that playful energy. Get out of being so serious. Open up to where you can have fun. Get in the water a little bit as it changes, right? I know from up there where you are, it may be a while. But remember to find that fun in life, all right? This is a great card to remind us of that energy. It's a little bit of the water energy. So we don't have to be so intense in our emotions. We can have fun. All right. Hope that helps. All right. Adrian for Phil. Phil got the butterfly. All right, Phil. Phil is going to have some good changes come forward. I know he's going through a lot. I know you guys have a lot going on. So just know that sometimes in that first part right now where we are, that darkness can feel intense. All right. Let it know that it's going to open up all right, to transformation. It is coming. All right. I love the butterfly card and use that as an idea. Like study the cocoon, study that chrysalis, and then it opens up. All right, hope that was helpful for you. Millie, Millie, let's see what we have for you. Did I see you laid a beautiful garden out your house? Did I see that? Was that at your house? All right, Millie. Millie, we got the tiger. All right, there needs to be a little bit more of that ferocious energy. All right, this is more of the fire sign, right? Look at that moon right in his center. Where can you rev it up a little bit? All right, this is really asking for that kind of energy to come forward. Use your intuitive abilities. Also, that passion and desire energy, really important. Check out what a tiger means. I remember one time I had a dream with a tiger in there. Very, very aware energy. All right, use that to your best. All right, let's see. Brooke, draw for me. Good for both. All right, thank you. All right, Brooke, here we go. Let's see what we're going to get for you. 
I love these. I wanted to start adding them in. All right, here we go. The whale. I love the whale. The whale is very intelligent energy, right? Very smart energy, using its other senses to be in, to, to really know how to move forward in life. Very protective. All right, so where can you really open up to those deeper senses too? And again, this is again reminding me to say that it's a water sign, but don't get caught in the emotional energy where you don't know what's going on. Use that intelligence that the emotional energy gives, which i.e. is your intuition. Being really able to open up to that card and know. All right, very important for you right now. All right, I hope that was helpful. All right, Patrick. All right, Patrick and Terry. Patrick, let's see what's going on for you, the guidance that you can bring forward. These are really pretty drawings. The colors are really beautiful as well. All right, Patrick, here we go. The elephant. Elephant is a friend for life, right? I love it. Look at the heart on his forehead. Look at the trunk there. Looks like there's a little fire or something down there. A candle, the light. All right, this is a really great card to remind yourself of your own loyalties to who you are and to those that you help and serve in the world. A really great card, the elephant. Very smart, very strong. Again, like a friend for life, right? And elephants never forget either. So where can you open this energy up for yourself and for those around you that are coming into your life at this time that help you in all that you do? And where can you find that same give and take as well? Really nice card. I like that. I like that. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> kind of interesting down there. The heart is at the forehead and the trunk has that fire. Using those senses as well. All right, beautiful. All right, Terry Harris. All right, Terry, let's see what's up for you. The raccoon. All right, that raccoon is a tri night traveler as well. So using some of those other senses to understand and open up. I'm not really so sure what this card is so much about. Let me see if I can look it up. I'm not that familiar with the raccoon energy. Let's see what it says. Give me a second. Rather than pretend I knew... All right, so raccoon is talented, shadowy, in hiding. Raccoon energy is at play within all artists to greater or lesser degrees at best. It indicates talent, tenacity, and skillfulness with a particular musical instrument or creative tool. Creative tool. What are your creative tools? This card's asking you for that. All right, it's shadow side points to an unresolved issue around self-image and success, sometimes using a stage name or wearing a mask. Works in an artist's favor. Other times it limits creativity. Am I who my audience thinks I am? Whatever if I am ready. What if I am ready to grow into something more? Ooh, I love that idea. Grow into something more. So when in balance, this card is very generous. It can be your friend. When out of balance, you can feel competitive or starving artist syndrome. To bring into balance is all about making new work. All right, so that was something I did not know about the raccoon. I wonder how much that resonates for you. Creative pursuits. All right, where can you bring creative new work forward for your own work, for your own life? All right, interesting cards. Very interesting. The animals add another perspective. They give us the ability to look to the guidance. So maybe look it up. Google it. This is the spirit animal spirit deck by Kim Cran. So look it up. You can Google her as well. Really great. I love it. She does the wild unknown. Beautiful drawings. All oh, like hand beautiful details. All right, guys, just to recap, we will have an intense week. All right. We know that. So just be prepared. Be doing your work. Take time for yourself. Know that it's going to shift. We have a new moon coming, which is going to be great, but we still have to get through the dark of the moon and some intense energy. Join me on the webinar tomorrow night, Empath Energy. I'll be talking all about it. Six types. Check it out, especially if you feel like you are inclined to be in this kind of energy. All right. Also, my group program is coming up. And if you want to learn some more about your intuitive abilities, I'll be talking about that too. So for now, stay true to your practice. Don't give up. Keep building those sacred spaces. The winners will be announced. And tune in to the Empowered Spirit Show this week. My guest, Lily Sanders, talks about her spiritual experience and the work that she is doing helping those with similar experiences. Have a great evening. Connect with your energy as you move through this week. Let me know how it's going. Come join us over in the Empowered Spirit Circle. Thanks again. I appreciate the support. Much love, much light to your spirit. Namaste.